Kai and welcome to Hardware Heaven. Today we are going to be taking a look at Beyond Two Souls. Now there has been many, many different thoughts on this game, but I've been playing quite a lot of it and I'm going to give you my opinion on it and whether I think you guys should check it out. So let's get started. <laughs> So just to give you a brief kind of very, very, very basic overview of the game, you play as Jodie, who is played by Ellen Page, if that makes sense. And she is a variable aged girl because she played through various different stages of her life. And she has a supernatural ghost kind of friend called Aiden, or in the game they say Aiden and you play through various events in her childhood through to adulthood and through her struggles and you can play as her as well as Aiden and you can do different things when you're her and different things when you're playing as her ghost counterpart. Now this game is one of those games where you're going to be emotionally invested from the get-go. Not necessarily in a good way, some things shock you very very early on and some things may make you cry, some things may make you frustrated, some things may remind you of when you were a teenager and all those struggles and bullying that you had in your life and kind of make you a little bit upset. So bear that in mind if you are wanting to play it. It's not the kind of game that is easy to get through emotionally. The difficulty level of the game isn't that hard because the majority of it is cutscenes. It's a lot more of a story narrative experience than it is a game. The gameplay isn't that strong, however the way the cinematics are, the way the voice acting is, the emotions that you really get from it and the story is very very strong. One of the things that I really did like about the game, though I didn't get to actually experience, is that you can actually play it with two players. We've had a lot of great games come out recently, The Last of Us, GTA 5, they've all been single player until the online mode would come out. This game you can actually play with two people and what I'm assuming is that one person would play as Jodie and one person would play as Aiden. Now I'm not really sure how that would work because unfortunately I didn't get to experience this and it is local to player. So that is something that you can also bear in mind if you are wanting to play it with your siblings or our friends in the same place. Because the controls aren't that in depth, you do feel like you are watching a film a lot of the time and to be honest, if you don't like quick time events, then you're really not going to like this game. Quick time events are something that happen very, very often, however they are relevant. When you get to a certain point in the game, you have to do quite a lot of training as Jodie and when you're doing this, you learn the combat mechanics and the movement mechanics in the game. Now, the movement and the combat is quite complicated and a little bit awkward at times. It's a case of Jodie will move her arm, it will then slow down and you have to press the stick in the same direction that her arm's moving. Now when she's straight ahead of you and kind of punching like this, you're not really sure whether she is going to the left or the right and sometimes can cause you to have to repeat things because you've just got the combat wrong because you can't really see it. But apart from that, it is very heavily story focused, so the combat isn't really something that we should worry too much about, you know. It's not an action FPS game. I really like the fact that we are jumping forth and backwards through the timeline of Jodie's life. You start off quite young, you'll jump to where she, I assume, is in her mid-twenties and then back again. And despite the fact that many others have said it's quite complicated to keep up with the narrative of the plot, I actually found it really interesting. I've always loved psychological thrillers as a film and I really think if this was a film it would be a blockbuster hit. I really like the characters and the actors that they had in Beyond Two Souls and I really think it's very strong and emotional and it's really played out and the character that most impacts the storyline doesn't have a voice and I really love that. Aiden is such a presence in the game through Jodie repeating things what he's saying or talking to him yet he never talks to you as a player so it kind of feels like you are playing as him rather than Jodie and I don't know if that was their intention sometimes you don't get as attached to Jodie as you would like to be but you definitely have an emotional kind of 
bearing over all of the characters. We want to make sure that they're all okay and play out the storyline to see what happens. I really like the fact that we are given choices in the game. Quite early on you're at a birthday party and you choose whether to answer questions truthfully that people are asking you or make up a lie or just kind of shrug them off and I like that we've got that choice. However, I've tried many different options and the story seems to play out exactly the same each time. People say different things and react a little bit different to you but in the end the events happen in the same way. So I feel that the choices weren't really necessary and if we're given a choice I would like it to actually affect the game in the story and rather than just kind of make us think like we're affecting it because it doesn't. The movement sometimes in the game can be a little bit awkward. Sometimes it's quite you know annoying to run through things you get unit collision and it's awkward the camera angles sometimes are a little bit weird but apart from that there is very, very few chances where you're having to worry about the movement. The one that I noticed the most was having to run through a train and you would run straight ahead, you would get through a door and the camera angle would flip so you would have to run the opposite way with your stick rather than carrying on, which is just a little bit awkward. I can't stress enough that this game is sad. It's going to make grown men cry, it's really emotional, but I love that. I love when games bring that side out of us. And it's not so much a game, as I said, it's more of a narrative story. So if you're looking for something that's going to give you hours and hours of fun and game and, can, you know, the combat is great and you're climbing mountains and doing that, then it isn't really the game for you. If you like something where you're following a great story, you really like watching kind of psychological thriller movies and TV shows, then you'll definitely enjoy this because it's an experience and you'll get to know the story and they put a lot of effort into the acting. So definitely check it out. But as I've said, if you don't like quick time events and you're looking for something that's more fun as a game on its own, then this probably isn't for you. I'm going to give this the recommended award purely because I recommend that you all play it to experience the story because it is really, really great. It continues on and on and before you know, three hours have gone by and you didn't even realise. There's not really any difficulty in the game until you get further on and have to control it in different ways, but it's a learning curve and you'll get to that point where you're finding it very, very easy and you can complete things without any struggle at all. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you liked this video, remember to click the subscribe button and check out any other reviews on this channel, and I will see you in the next video.